the next part is you need to start coming here under the endscape. So if you look, the first three are all related. Well, they're not really related to each other, but they're different settings. So if this was a view you wanted to render like a two-dimensional rendering still, not an animation, just a still image, that's what you would do. You would set it up, make sure the settings under the render settings are the ones you want, and then you click this, render image, it will ask you where you want to save it, and then it renders it and exports it. It doesn't change anything else. It just does that. The next one, the EXE, I'll show you that after this. That's going to export this environment as a standalone file. And then the web is the same thing, but it's web-based. It's not a standalone file. It, it, like, it does this whole thing and uploads it so that you can send a link to someone. The EXE it creates a tiny little file. It's not tiny, but it's not as big as your whole model. And it's just the rendered environment. So imagine Enscape without SketchUp running. And then you can give that to a client or share that with someone. And you don't actually have to have Enscape or SketchUp or any modeling software. All you need is that little exe file. You open that, and it looks like you just launched Enscape. So we can do that. We go exe, save it on my desktop so that you can see what I'm talking about. And then I'll even leave, leave it named that. So I hit save. And let's see. I should probably save this too. Probably should have done that before I did that. So hopefully it doesn't crash. Um, so I'm going to stop doing things and let it do its thing. But it does look pretty good. And we haven't done a whole lot. So I just did something, so maybe it's done. It's surprisingly fast for what it does, because it does a lot of work. The export succeeded, even though it looked like it didn't, because it pops up at you, and <laughs> it's like an exclamation. And look, it's only 78 megabytes, and I'm not sure how big this file is, but I guarantee you it's probably more than that. So I'm going to hit Save and SketchUp, just in case anything happens. Um, I'm going to show my... Oh, that doesn't do that on this computer. I was trying to just show my desktop so I could open it real quick. But here, see? It's this. So now, I'm not sure if I need to close Enscape. Let's close it. Here's the thing to remember. If you hit the X, you technically close Enscape. You don't lose anything, because there's Enscape's not really doing anything right now. It's just showing this model using the settings mm -hmm. that we put. So if I close it, it goes away. And then see, like I can't use any of these, because I haven't launched Enscape. I'm going to start this thing just to show you what it does. Oops. So I'm opening that exe file. So this is just a standalone file. It has nothing to do with Enscape. So you can send this to anybody. They can open up on their computer and they'll see this. It launches just like Enscape does. It doesn't have all those other settings like it did before. And then it just shows the rendered environment. And it normally has the little shortcuts like this. And so it's exactly the same, and it actually sometimes works a little bit faster because it's just on its own. It doesn't have all the back end that needs to know. It needs to update the settings and stuff. But see, we can get right here and have like a coffee with this lady. She's drinking her espresso, and like everyone else is just standing around like, oh, no. Then this guy's like way overdressed. Um, but see, and you can even change the time of day. And it renders live. And if you look up at the sky, like you see it all go by. And it's set to whatever settings you told it to use. Like they can't change like how many clouds there are or anything. It's just locked in. But the more you leave it, the nicer the rendering becomes. See there, it becomes a lot clearer. So this is really useful if we're trying to get um, like a client to understand the design and then you can send this to them, and then they're in like a, a board meeting with people that weren't at the meeting. They say, look, this is what they showed us. And then they could say, well, what's over here? Like, are we going to have enough room to put, like, our sculpture? And then they could say, like, let's see. Like, we didn't have a rendering from over there, but maybe we go look. And then they go, oh, yeah, this is totally big enough. And then they can see the whole thing. The flip side to that is you can't hide anything because, like, they could also, like, do this and then look at this side of the building and be like what the heck like just a giant flat wall so you can't forget that you you 
once you start doing this, like you're now designing the whole thing and you're giving them the whole environment. It's not no longer can you hide behind like those like Hollywood models where it looks like a Wild West facade and then behind it there's nothing. Like because they can just go around it and look at the back of it. So um, but this is not even in Enscape anymore. This is just a standalone file. That's the part that's crazy that is really cool. And you don't need a license for this. So let's say you're, you want your office to use Enscape. They can get one license, and then that one person can, can, can create these little environments. And you could have like 10 meetings all at once for different projects, and they can all be showing this in the conference room. And you're not using up all the licenses. So it's really useful. Um, or even as like a coordination tool, you can give that to consultants and stuff, and they can see it. So, uh, so now I want to go back to Enscape.